In this video, I'll show you how to write code to perform a linear search. That is, how to scan through a list to check if it contains a particular item. I'm also going to say something about the way a Python list is stored in the computer's memory, which is important to know if you want to write efficient code, and if you want to understand the dictionary data structure, which you'll meet in the next lesson. Here's a program which creates a list of cities. Of course, the list could be much longer than this, with many more items. In a later lesson, you'll see how to create a list from the data in an external file, which means you might not know exactly what is in the list. Now, suppose that you want to search the list for a particular city, let's say Tokyo. You could do so like this. I'm setting up two variables, one called i, which I'll use to count my way through a loop and to reference individual items within the list, and another called found, which is a boolean variable. A boolean variable is a very simple type which can hold either a true or a false. I've assigned a value of false to this one. And here's my loop. The loop will continue while the value of i is less than the length of the list. And within the loop, I'm going to test each item. If the item which I'm currently looking at is equal to Tokyo, then I'm going to set the value of the Boolean variable to true, and the break command will force the loop to finish immediately. Also, within the loop, I'm going to increment the value of i. Take the value of i, add 1 to it, and put the result back into i. All of this code is within the loop because it's indented. These two lines of code are within the if block because they're indented even further. Finally, outside of the loop, I'm going to test the value of the Boolean variable. And that's it. As I said, this well-known algorithm is called a linear search and it's worth getting to know if you're learning computer science. Each item in a list is actually stored in a separate memory location. These memory locations are next to each other. We say that they are contiguous. The program checks each memory location in turn to see if it contains the item we're looking for, in this case, Tokyo. If the item is found, the boolean variable is assigned a value of true, and the break command forces the loop to finish immediately. This means the program doesn't check any more items needlessly. If the target value is not in the list, all of the items are checked, and the loop comes to a natural end, in which case the boolean variable would contain its original value of false. When the loop is complete, one way or the other, the if block outside of the loop checks the value of the boolean variable and reports whether or not the item was found. Let's give it a try. The city was found. Let's try searching for a city which we know is not in the list. The city is not in the list. By the way, very conveniently, Python has an in operator which provides another way to check if an item is in a list, like this. Watch this. The first message is coming from my linear search, and the second message is coming from the if statement, which is using the in operator. As you can see, you can achieve the same effect with much less code. You should appreciate, however, that even if you use an if statement with an in operator, then behind the scenes, Python is still performing a linear search. List items are stored in separate memory locations, and they have to be checked one after another. Occasionally, it might be more appropriate to use a loop. For example, to scan the list backwards. One way or another, Checking if an item exists in a very large list could take a long time. And, potentially, if you double the amount of data in the list, it will take twice as long. Now, if you happen to know the index number of the item that you're looking for, 
you can retrieve it very quickly, like this. Furthermore, it takes the same amount of time to retrieve an item from a large list, regardless of where it is. It might be near the beginning of the list, near the middle, or near the end. The time taken to fetch an item is constant if you know the index number. The reason for this is that the index number you specify is effectively a memory address. And, without going into detail here, the way computer memory is designed means that an item can be retrieved very quickly, no matter where it is in the memory, if you know the address of the location. In the next video, you'll see how the dictionary data structure takes advantage of this. In the meantime, try coding a linear search yourself. You could modify it to prompt the user for the target value with an input statement. You could also try searching your list with an if statement and the in operator. If you want to challenge, modify your linear search to scan the list in reverse order, that is, start the scan by examining the last item first, and then iterate towards the first item. Pause now to give it a try, and I'll show you a solution in a moment. To find the city, which the user chooses, I can do this. Whatever the user types in, we'll go into the variable called target, and then instead of hard coding a city here, I'll use the name of the variable. I can also improve the output a little bit. Let's give it a try. The city London was found, let's try a city which we know is not in the list. If I want to scan the list backwards, then instead of initialising i with a value of 0, I'm going to initialise it with the length of the list, minus 1. Minus 1, because if there are 8 items in the list, then the index number of the last item is 8 minus 1. Remember, the index numbers start from 0. The exit condition for my while loop will be when i is less than 0. So the loop will run while i is greater than or equal to 0. And one more change I need to make is to decrement i rather than increment it. With each pass through the loop, we subtract 1 from i. Let's see if it still works. It's still working, but it's not apparent that I'm scanning the list backwards. If I want to see this, I can use a print statement. And you can see I'm outputting Amsterdam then Montreal, then Mumbai, and working my way towards London. I am indeed scanning backwards.